Welcome. You have arrived. We're excited you're here. Can you Out tell? on the Dwee Bros podcast Woo! field trip. Field trip time. We have we have broke down the walls. I, I you know, do you remember that house that was going to be the new set destroyed? We yeah. are at uh, a place. We are at home. we are at the arcade, as you can see. This isn't my new house yeah, with uh, Blu-rays. Uh, Blu-ray collection that Zach decided we're, to buy. We're at a place called Arcade Legacy. Um, Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. If you're in the Cincinnati region, please Google Arcade Legacy. Google it up. Hit it up. It's awesome. So we're going to be playing some games. We're going to be looking at some games. There's games all over the place. I can't even. I'm drowning <laughs> in, games. in games. Look at that. Look at that Atari game. Just that all. We had. It's all over the place. We had games out the wazoo. We had games this month to talk about, and we're going to get to that. But you know what? We, our, my hands are jiggling. You know why they're jiggling? I got to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got. I got to play some games. So we're gonna. We'll be right back with some games. Talking about games of the month, movies, TV shows, theater plays. Theater, theater plays. plays. Yeah, theater plays. A lot what? of theater plays. So, all right, can, can you do a cool yeah, transition? Can you do a cool transition? All right, what's up? Uh, we're going to let Jacob and uh, Travis dance for a little bit. So, uh, enjoy. April, what do you think? I think they're going to kill it out there. So, as they're talking... April, maybe you'll be able to help with this. Uh, did you see the Nintendo Direct? No. No? No. Okay, then no help at all. Nope. Uh, so the Nintendo Direct came out. And uh, we got some uh, cool look at some stuff. Biggest being, you know what the biggest was? Say Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. The new Smash Brothers was a surprise. They hit it in a Splatoon. I thought it was going to be a Splatoon TV show. That was not the case. Uh, and we got a new Smash Brothers. Uh, they also showed some new 3DS. Some new 3DS stuff. Are you? Do you play 3DS a lot still? Uh, yeah. You do? What do you play on there? Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. See, for me, with the Switch stuff, uh, I'm kind of... Well, we're, we're going to get Alex's... Uh, we're going to get Alex's... Do you play the 3DS a lot still? Not really, honestly, no. See, April's saying she's still playing Fire Emblem over here. I was watching this last Direct and hoping that we can just put the 3DS to bed. It's time. Why? I'm tired. I'm, t I'm ready for Switch 24-7. I do play a 3DS game. It's on Citro, the uh, emulator on PC. So. We don't condone piracy here. Just check out these moves. How'd you guys do? How'd you guys do? How'd you How'd you guys do? You won. We're talking, uh, if you guys want to talk a little bit, we're talking about the new Nintendo Direct. Oh, yeah. Uh, they put the Smash at the end. They had Smash at the end. Yeah. That was the biggest thing for me. Uh, but I also, I'm at the point now I'm done with 3DS. We need to move yeah. on to Switch stuff. Yeah, I'm with you. The, I, I honestly don't know that much of it was memorable because the only thing I actually remember was Smash. Yeah. I think that they showed a, a couple more ports that we didn't know about. Kirby, Kirby's Luigi's Mansion, yeah, the 3DS, oh, that's true. complete garbage. Is a guy that bought a Switch for Zelda and for Mario. There's nothing really that has me too excited, but I'm I'm still okay with it because I feel like I've gotten plenty out of the system. But it was kind of pretty tame. I thought Smash was exciting, but it's still a ways off. Yeah, um, but I think that. Yeah, I don't think that there was a lot of memorable stuff really. Not that that's a problem. It's kind of the lull before E3 outside of Smash. Smash is super memorable, but I don't know. Are you big into Smash? Uh, 
Yeah, I get them whenever they come out. They're fun to play. Uh, and I usually play them for a couple months, and then I kind of I kind of put it up for a little while. I haven't um, played one since the really play. Well, Jacob's going to help us. Uh, yeah, but I I was super I was really excited for this one to be a full like it looks like a full new one. I don't think this is a port, which yeah. I kind of, I kind of was thinking it was a port. Breath of the Wild Link in there. Yeah, there was Breath of the Wild Link. There was Splatoon people. I think this is a whole new one. And to think it's been four years too. Uh, I did ask April already. She was defending the 3DS because she plays Fire Emblem, but yeah, I love Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem is like one of my favorite Nintendo games. I love the Game Boy Advance one, like the first one, or the first one in America. It was really the first Fire Emblem. Uh, I thought was uh, really fun. The one that's on Game Boy Advance. Um, I got that as a kid, and I played it so freaking much, but I never played the ones after that. So, do they have a continuing on story, April? What's the what? Give me kind of the lowdown on the series. Oh, gosh. Well, each of them are different. The um, I can't remember the name of my favorite one, but um, it's like the first. The ones? Yeah, the first one is about a... About. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. Not a fan. Not a true fan. No. Tell me the first one you played. How about that? That so, is the first one I played. And you don't remember it? What's the recent one you the most recent one you remember? I remember that I don't know how to explain it. Okay, that's fair. I think that's fair. I think here's here's what we need to look at here, guys. I think understand. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Here's what we need to understand is that there's only one thing that matters. If you want to follow me real quick, I'll show you what matters, all right? Come on, let's come with me, come with me. Understanding this realm, the Nintendo Direct introduced one good thing, and only one good thing only. And it's the most playable game in the country, it's the most competitive game in the country. And that is Super Smash Brothers right there. Super Smash Brothers came out, revolutionized the competitive scene, made it what it is today. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit down for a minute and we're going to play a quick game of one-on-one -on -one Smash just to make you understand how important that game is. Zach, would you do the honors of playing me? All right, so what we're going to do, go ahead. I'm going to let you guys tell your perspectives while I go get some controllers and we can kind of go from there, okay? I got some Jones, so I'm sugared up. Oh, I got some Jones, so this I'm sugared up. Brought to you by, this podcast brought to you by Jones Soda. I, I keep wanting, I keep wanting to talk into the Jones soda and drink the mic. I'm sugared up. I, I'm sugar, I'm sugared up. I'm sugared up. So while we're waiting on Jacob to get some controllers, uh, did you get the Solar Amiibo? You put the mic to me. I did not. No. Did you get it? Yes, I did. Pre-ordered that sucker. That thing was pretty cool. Every time I say I'm done with Amiibos, I'm not done with Amiibos. Uh, another thing, one more thing I want to talk about the Nintendo Direct. Okay. The new No More Heroes. I played the old No More Heroes on Wii. Really liked that. Skipped out on the other ones, but No More Heroes is cool because it was like you had a, a stages of bosses you had to get to. Okay. And they were all designed really cool. Very excited for the new one because the new one is each, like going up to each boss... Like, the levels you play are a different genre. So you could be playing a shooter. You could play, like, a third-person action game. And it changes genres to each, like, boss you're going towards. Nice. Really excited about that. Thought that was really cool. You know what? Let's go straight into a game real quick. What we were talking about earlier, this is Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. Um, a really, really enjoyable game. Me and Zach are going to quickly play through just a quick round just to kind of show you how it's done. And just kind of show you why Smash Bros is the game of all games. I'm telling you right now, I'm, this is why I'm hyped. This is why I'm excited. All right, and Travis is going to have to commentate and do the camera and hold a Jones soda at the same time. I think Travis is very capable. And hold it, hold it like not too close. All right. Don't hold that close. All right, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. We're about to get our smash on, boys and girls. Put on your seatbelts. Um, put on your pants. Uh, put in the put in the live chat what stadium you want us to go to. Oh, yeah, Just yeah. throw that in the live chat. Hold on, where's, uh, where's up there? There it is. These are our competitors. Team Ness for life. In the right corner. Try 
Werewolf. Yeah, in the left corner we got Zach, the Zach attack. All right. So while you guys watch them, I'll talk about what I tried to play uh, this month. Um, so um, as I'm taking directions here from this very nosy video game player. All right, let me tell you a story about why PC gaming sucks. Um, so this month I have been exceptionally busy. See, when you become an adult like me, you're going to be very busy with work. You're going to be very busy, you know, if some of you guys maybe have kids, I don't have any kids, but sometimes I feel like I have kids. I live with Jacob. And uh, essentially, you're going to be so busy that when you get home after your long day of work, all you're going to want to do is turn on the game and play. And uh, twice this week, I was cripplingly disappointed uh, by my PC and by the games that I very stupidly chose to play. So uh, the first one was uh, Warframe. I've been wanting to play Warframe for a long time, and uh, I installed it. It's free to play. I got all excited to play it, and I tried to sign up, and uh, there was a very unfortunate circumstance where the email confirmation didn't come, so I signed up again. It didn't come again, and I spent 30 minutes on it, and eventually I said, F it, I'm never playing Warframe. I threw it in the garbage can. I took the digital download. I dropped it in my recycling bin, and I said, empty that sucker. Warframe is blackballed. Very fun. So then the second game I tried to play was Star Wars Battlefront 2, because all Jacob will talk about this month is how much he just freaking loves that game. So I bought that on sale and installed it, tried turning it on, needed an 18 gig update, downloaded the 18 gig update, opened it again, 10 minute loading screen just to get to the main menu. Get to the main menu, it's glitching out. I click on campaign, another 10 minute waiting loading screen I could not figure out what was going on so I turned that off all that being said PC gaming sucks I'm going back to being a console slave I'm gonna I bought an Xbox one and uh, my plan is to just buy Forza and only play Forza that's all I'm gonna play that way nothing messes up and I'm just gonna play Forza I'm not gonna install anything else and uh, that's gonna be my life now because I'm done with I'm done with uh, the tech end of things, um, and so that was my very awful, boring story about gaming this month. As you can see, there was some wave dashing and some uh, hacking, wave hack wave hacks were going on. So I don't I don't. This is why I think this is one of the best games that's going to come out, and it's going to be one of the best games for the Switches. It always is and never fails to be good. So, Yeah. So as you can see, um, I did was able to beat our boy Dweebo here. No, they can't see him. So good. Well, good. If, if you missed it, I beat him. It was pretty bad. Uh, well, I showed him what's up. I that's still camera <laughs> so this is what um, your boy Werewolf has been up to this past well, month. I decided to download Star Wars Battlefront 2, the game that we cursed. That my friend Travis just got gun, just got done cursing. I think, the, I think they're gonna really love that you're playing oh, Battlefront too. They're gonna be very impressed. This game, all right. This game is the game of all games. Uh, no, they have to use the wireless ones. I'm not sure. You have to go check. I, I went and got the two I had. Go ask for more. More people showing up. More of our friends. More of Dwee Bros. And Dwee Growls is up. Oh, Dwee Growl is leaving. But with that being said, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was a huge, huge success to me um, in terms so, of... such a surprise. They, they did a 180 on all that stuff. Well, so you're enjoying it now. I'm enjoying it, but the only reason I'm enjoying it now is because they did the, the whole 180. Yeah. They completely scrapped the hero system, yeah. which is what they should have done in the beginning. All heroes should have been unlockable, yeah. um, unless you want to add some surprise heroes. But yeah. what they did I'll now... What they did now is they made every hero unlockable in-game based on how you perform in the game, which is how it should have been in the beginning. Um, now no person who's doing bad in the game can just pick up a random hero icon yeah. and plays a hero. What's been a pleasant surprise is the campaign. I have enjoyed the campaign thoroughly, been a huge fan of it, and it was well written. It picks up right after the second Death Star is blown up. Um, talking about where the Empire's at and what the Empire's doing. 
I'm just really impressed. It was a really, really pleasant surprise, and I only got it for twenty five dollars. That's the perfect price. Good me. deal. Yep, good deal and a perfect one eighty. It makes EA look like not complete idiots, even though they still are. Yeah. So this is one of those games I kind of uh, package with Metal Gear Survive mm. that like so many people are like hating yeah. right out the gate. Well. Battlefront, like they really, uh, they, they really, really screwed over some people. Yeah. But at the same time, same thing that happened with Konami and yeah. Metal Gear Survive. So I think people just didn't give it a chance. So I don't think people are getting a chance. So that's cool that you gave it a chance. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you're liking it. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think what EA did was right by lowering the price and omitting the fact that hey, look, bad pricing, bad game. <laughs> yeah. Let's at least make the bad game a cheaper price. So, so that's cool. Yeah. I'm glad you're liking it. Uh, I have just been playing, and I've done it in the Hangouts, I've been playing Yakuza 0. There we go. Uh, it is the prequel to the Yakuza games. Um, Yakuza, Yakaza, Tomato, Tomata. Um, but I've been really enjoying that. Just the story and finding out. There is there is stuff in this game that goes back to Yakuza 4 or 5, like clears up something that happened in that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting through the way that I think I'm right three-fourths of the way through after that I'm going to Yuk Yakuza 6 there that comes out next month that's the finale of Kiru's Kiru Kairu whatever you say his name <laughs> uh, his story so really I'm really engrossed in the characters in the world the setting is 80s Japan uh, My great question time is this is the game made by Sega right yes okay so in terms of Sega we know what they produce you know what they put out there is this one of their better original IPs or? Oh, for sure, yeah. Okay. And what's cool in this one is, uh, and I think the other ones had this too, but they have an arcade. They have the Sega Arcade. So nice. all this stuff is it's based in places in Japan you can actually go to. So they have the actual Sega Arcade there, and they like it's like one to one some of these places. Um, wow. And you can actually play like old arcade games. We're okay. in an arcade. How how apropos? How how pro how appropriate? House of the Dead, stuff like that. You can play Space Harrier like the whole game. Oh, nice. So in Yakuza Six is set in modern times. You can play all of Virtual Fighter Five, which yeah. is a modern game. You get that game with it in the arcade and stuff. That's so, impressive. So I'm really looking forward to playing that next month. Uh, that's all I've played. Is this? I've just. That's all I've had time for. Yeah, we. I wish we would have got to play uh, Way Out, but we'll get to that soon. I think a Way Out will be an awesome hangout. Yeah. We, we need to get. We'll, we'll get to out. that uh, sometime Stay in April. For that. Yeah, sometime in April. I want to play that. That I'm excited about. I heard of nothing but great reviews. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you have you have you watched anything lately? Saw um, any stuff lately? So I tried. I actually picked up Breaking Bad because you oh. mentioned um, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch Breaking Bad. I actually got to the part where I met Saul, the guy from the Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've kind of bought him out on the show. I'm around season three. Um, I don't know. I. I, for TV shows, it's hard for me to get really addicted. Like, I'm either all in or I'm all out. So I binge-watched three complete seasons, and then I'm, now I'm time taking a break. Yeah. So, But it's all right. It's not bad. I don't I don't see the hype for it yet, I guess is what I'm saying. Hmm, interesting. Um, I, I will say that show does hit, like, a peak around okay. four. Okay. It does. I mean, it's ramping up to, like, some really cool stuff. I but. cannot stand his wife. Oh, really? She's a interesting. Terrible, she's a terrible character. Like... Her whole acting, her whole character, just got awful. Wow. Um, Put in the I comments if you agree. Did I disagree? Finish um, Dragon Ball Super. I've been hearing uh, some good stuff about Super. Man. Wow. I tell you what, all I can say is if you have not watched it, just quit what you're doing now, quit your job, go watch it. Phenomenal show. True, true follow up to Dragon Ball Z. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I will get to. I'm gonna go back through Dragon Ball and watch the original Dragon Ball, nice. and then I want to watch uh, GT. Yep. Uh, or no. What's the what's Dragon Kai? Z. Kai. Oh, Kai. Kai is perfect for people who are like. I don't Kai need is the Kai is Z without the filler. Yeah. You can so go then super, I'm going Kai. Then I'm going. Su Kai. Then I'm going Super. Yep. There we go. I that, think that would be the way. That'll to go. be that'll be my way. Uh, Travis, have you watched anything uh, lately? Anything cool, TV, TV show or movie? I've been watching. Uh, what's that? Oh, I've been watching uh, Cowboy Bebop. I'm like ten episodes in. It's basically like an anime that was made like I don't know, like 2000. It was nine, uh, late 90s, 90s or 98, 99. Yeah. It was really cool, man. It's basically like here in this universe, like with uh, all the planets, and there's like 
it's kind of like a bounty hunter show. So it's, but it's, uh, yeah, like it yeah, it's really very good. good. It's cool. They got a lot of cool music in it. I really like it. It's a very adult anime. It's just oh. very, it's very like the aesthetic and everybody's smoking and like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, it, is. It's it, definitely, it just felt like. It's definitely not like a Toonami show. Like, and there's a lot of violence. It's, sure. Yeah. But, um, it's a little, I'm kind of waiting to see if it kind of breaks out of its formula. Cause basically every episode, it's like another person that they're hunting like uh, is Bounty Hunter so it's, it's pretty good so far a lot of people think it's like the best anime show ever made I don't necessarily feel that but I feel like I really like it so I'm looking forward to yeah. getting it far into it the way they structure a show and every episode's like different but it, it just his character is really cool I don't know Yeah, I like the show a lot yeah Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk real quick I think after this game let's go play some arcades and I'll talk some more but um, I watched a couple movies, a couple TV shows this month. Uh, I'll just talk about one movie I thought was really interesting, and that was AI. That's a Steven Spielberg that was originally made by. It was originally being made by Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick uh, wrote out all, had the storyboard for it, so it, it feels a lot like a Stanley Kubrick. Come back, King! I got you, my man. One stock left. I'll kill Kenny with two. That's what I'm talking about. Smash Brothers, baby. Yeah, it started out as a Kubrick project, and he kind of handed it over to uh, Steven Spielberg. And then he so died, this, right? Yeah, then he died. Uh, so this movie is really interesting because I did not know how it was going to play out. Uh, it was totally different than what I thought it was going to be. It's more fantastical in parts. Uh, very cool, but it, it involves a, a, a boy. He's actually a robot. That's right at the beginning. And the movie is all about like, can you feel things for like AI? Can you can robots have feelings? Yeah. Can you like feel for a robot? Um, don't want to spoil it. Uh, it. You know, you've had almost twenty years to see it, but uh, I feel like that movie. I feel like that movie when I was younger, people kind of made fun of it, um, and it wasn't received very well. Not like overly poorly, yeah. but like it. It's never been in like top ten movies of all time. Yeah. But I think it's aged well from what I've heard. Sure, yeah. I hear more about it now than I ever did. Yeah, I, I really like some of the moments in it and the set pieces and stuff. And okay. uh, so, so before you go into the rest of your list, then, can I ask you a follow-up? Sure, yeah. Are you at all interested in... Where is your percentage level of interest in Ready Player One? Spielberg's new movie. One percent. <laughs> and, and the one percent is because it is Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I still want to see it and see yeah. what he did with this, but the advertising and it's crazy, and, and I know man. this is eighty. I know this is a book from like the eighties and stuff, or yeah. around the eight, late eighties or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm just not into like mashing everything together. It just seems like a giant fan fiction. Not my style, but Steven Spielberg is my style. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll dip in. I'll I, I'll check it out eventually. Not now, but yeah. we'll see. It's opening. Are you gonna go see? It? I thought the advertising was really bad. I thought the posters were bad. Um, so I wasn't interested at all. And then I've been reading reviews and people say, actually like the, the advertising stuff doesn't really do it justice. It's actually a really good adventure movie. And they say that it has elements of like old Spielberg in it. So I have been laughing. I'm a little interested. I've been laughing very hard at, they have a wiki page for Ready Player One. and. There are so many cameos in the movie, like the little Easter eggs and this and there, yeah. that people have just started putting in fake things. So someone I was cracking up put in, like, there was uh, a Nintendo Weekly thing they did from 2010 to 2012. Like, they had a series going in, a character that reoccurred, like, live action. Yeah. And they put in something Reggie or something, something Gary, Dark Gary or something. I don't know what it was. And, he's in the and, and somebody... Put him and a bunch of other people in the wiki, oh, acting like oh. like if you look hard enough, he's in the movie, and it's like he's not oh, in the movie. Weird. Like the most obscure people you can think on planet I will, Earth. I will say a last note about Ready Player One. It is pretty funny. I didn't realize this. The whole point of the movie is that they're trying to find these Easter eggs. Uh, they're trying to find these Easter eggs, and uh, the movie's opening this weekend, which is Easter weekend. Ah. Uh, so Twitter, like that's the first time that the uh, marketing campaign actually made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, we're going to uh, get up, and we're going to go to another place in this establishment, and we'll talk more because I've got some really cool things I watched this week, month. All right, Alex, so what did you play this month? What was on your list of 
What was in your console tray? I didn't play much except uh, I got a copy of Castlevania Symphony of the Night off eBay last week. And that's been uh, pretty fun. I played that a lot when I was younger. Nice. And I heard you were playing Sims. Yeah, that's about all I've been playing. What's going on in Sims? Tell, tell me about the craziest Sim moment. <laughs> um, I've been watching someone who plays Sims on YouTube. And there was something... Keep talking. I'm going to turn on night vision. Okay. Okay, this is a lot better. Okay. <laughs> there, was, there was something on hers that was really weird that has never happened to me before, and her teenager got pregnant with alien babies, and he had two alien babies. That, is, that doesn't happen every day. No, it doesn't. So that was exciting. So just the Sims, and you're just having alien babies. Yeah. Nice. Anything else you're playing, uh, Travis or Alex? I'm gonna. I have a different angle I can do now. This is all in night vision, by the way. Oh, nice. Nice. Travis and I have been playing uh, Warcraft Three. Yes. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. We played Warcraft Three. Been a really fun experience. Yeah. From the master. The master. The master. So how's that? How's Warcraft 3? Warcraft 3 is really cool. The coolest thing is when you open up the game, there's like all these news alerts. And it's like this game that was made like 15 years ago. But there's like alerts about modern Blizzard games and updates. So it's like this really old crappy font. And it's like the newest Diablo 3 expansion is coming out today. And it's dated like, you know, 2014 and stuff. So, uh, but actually Warcraft 3 itself is really fun. Uh, he bought me the war chest, which is basically this big package that you can get for PC. And uh, essentially it's got like the game and the expansion and like a strategy guide and all this stuff. But uh, it's just a good old classic RTS. If any of you kids play League of Legends or Dota, they're built directly off of uh, what Warcraft 3 was basically. The original Dota was a Warcraft 3 mod, so yeah, the, uh, worth bringing up. The original, you know, graphics of that time period, or at least that game, they never were really stunning, but, you know, they have an aesthetic to them that still really kind of hold up today. And um, it just rock solid gameplay and then super in-depth, like, tech tree system. That's, uh, that's just a classic that I don't think will ever really be topped, even by things like StarCraft II or other RTSs that have come since. So. Nice. Yeah. So Warcraft 3, is that everything you played? Oh, Warcraft 3, you played... Warcraft uh, 3, I talked about my awful experience. I also played with my buddy uh, Into the Breach. Into the Breach is a new game from the people who made FTL. It's basically like FTL style game meets Evangelion. It's basically you have these mechs and you fight uh, these different um, monsters on these procedurally generated like 12 by 12 tiles basically. Kind of like a Final Fantasy Tactics type thing, turn-based. Really fun game. It's cool. Uh, you kind of are clearing out these different islands. It's like uh, different t topography, different types of land. And uh, basically as these bad guys, these bad aliens, attack the buildings, you lose power. So you have to protect the buildings, but you also got to kill the enemies. You got to survive so many turns. So Into the Breach, it's on PC. Uh, I'm planning on buying it myself. I played it with my buddies for a few hours, and uh, it's a fun game. If you like the FTL, you definitely should check it out. Nice. All right, well, I say we move on to our next game. All right, we're here with Kenny Slapjack Gabbard. We're talking stuff Kenny's played this month. Good timing. We've got Jacob in the background. Uh, what have you been up to this month? What have you been playing? Um, I just picked up a PS4 Pro and got a 4K TV. And I re-picked up Horizon, which I just recently beat a few weeks ago but I picked it back up when I got that TV and it's been incredible that game was a trip a very good trip he brought that over and I could not believe how crisp everything I mean the game looked good on 1080p but 4k was like some different yeah and then I picked up uh, Star Wars when it was on sale and I started the story mode of that last night and I was blown away by how good parts of that look some of it's kind of like it's weird, it's like EA wanted their logo to look glitchy on 4K TVs. I don't really know if that was maybe That's something. A feature. On. Yeah, probably a feature. Um, but man, like playing through that, it plays seamlessly. It, I'm not sure if it is, but it feels like 60 frames a second, and it looks beautiful. Nice. 
Have you watched anything this month? Anything movie-wise or TV show? Uh, my girlfriend and I are watching through The Office, and uh, we're about done. We got like three episodes left. And uh, on my own, I've been I picked up an anime that I watched as a kid, Full Metal Alchemist. They have uh, the Brotherhood. Um, I guess they redid some of it, and um, they put that. You've on. Always told me about that. I need to check that out. Still, I love that show. I watched it a lot as a kid. Um, so I've been watching that. I've finished almost part one. I guess there's like four or five parts, which I was looking at some of like the uh, the screen caps from some of the new episodes that I haven't seen, and they were going a whole different direction than the original anime I watched when I was a kid went. So, like, I've watched ten episodes or so, and they're already almost to where the end of the 60-episode anime I watched as a kid was. So, I'm interested. Nice. So that's all for you for this month? That's all I've been doing recently. Playing news. Uh, I picked back up Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for a little bit. Oh, nice. I had never beat that. I bought it when I bought my Wii U. Oh, I, was, I thought you were going to say you got the Switch version, but that's not out yet, I don't think. It's not out yet. It's early access. Um, but I picked, I picked that back up because I hooked my Wii U back up because uh, a couple guys come over to my house for breakfast uh, every week and we play Smash, so... I hooked the Wii U back up for Smash, and we've been, I've been playing a little bit of Donkey Kong on the side. Nice. All right, well, let's move on. I had to get away from the games. I had enough of those games, and it was kind of loud. Uh, so I wanted to talk about a couple shows. we got to have something game-related. Can you get, like, some of this in here? Does that look good? It's an Xbox. Uh, I watched two shows on the Netflix, on the on the old Netflix called uh, Flint Town. And if you have, have you seen this, Jacob? Are you on Netflix head? Okay, Flint Town is about they they follow a couple people, a couple of police officers in Flint, Michigan. Uh, if you don't know about Flint, Michigan, they were kind of hit with a water crisis. Uh, the Cindy, the not not the Cindy, the city flipped the switch on their water source and flipped it over to uh, the river. That caused all this lead to get into the uh, water. Been causing a lot of issues. Um, so yeah, it just kind of follows like the police there and you know, all of the controversial stuff. You've seen it in the news. And it does a really good job of like towing that line of like, hey, they need to step up their game. And then they also tow that line of like, you know, uh, you know, the police have it really hard, like <laughs> in this town. Um, so yeah, that's been that's been really cool. Uh, the other thing I've been watching, so check check that out if you're interested in like the police stuff, especially like what they're dealing with is nuts. Like they're they're understaffed. Really recommend that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a uh, show called Wild Wild Country. Have you have you seen that? Okay. Okay. P everyone, please like Wild Wild Country is a document document do, mini documentary docu how do I say this? docu series. I think that I think that's what they call it. I think that's what they call it. It is 6 episodes long. Um and I freaking is this still on uh Night Vision? Okay, we're still in we're still in the dark lurking about. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh I freaking loved this, and there is a documentary that I've recommended to the guys before, but it's called The Imposter. The Imposter is an incredible documentary. Had my jaw hit the floor. I had the same feelings I, as I had with that movie, with this series, episode to episode. The whole series is about, and I had no clue about this happening. I wanna, I'm curious if you've heard about it. Everybody I've talked to don't, doesn't remember this. It was on in the news, and it was... A, basically a religious cult some would call it a cult some would call it just like people that lived in this commune came from India and there was this like leader this like cult leader or this like religious like leader of them called the Bhagwan and they're called the Rajneeshis and they came from India and uh, all of these people from around the world started come, coming from all around the world to India then it got to the point where they were going to get like kill them or kick them out of India it got into this legal mess 
And those people came to Oregon and bought a ginormous plot and like these like this these fields and like this like area, like it was a ginormous area in Oregon that they bought and built like this like utopia on. It is six parts. The stuff that they go into on this series had my jaw hit the floor. It is just the most nut situations that these people get into. It toys with like the freedom of America and like the Constitution, while at the same time going, "Oh, we can't let these people wait. Wait a second. These, like these people are gaining so much power. How much is too much freedom? Do we bend the Constitution? You know what I mean? Do we bend the Constitution to like let?" this insanity keep going like they were controlling parts of the like it got so bad they were like slowly gaining power to the point where it's like do we stop this but then we kind of bend the constitution i don't want to spoil it but it is a wild freaking ride incredible uh all six parts had me had like my interest and stuff so definitely check out wild wild country xbox Hey, hey. Uh, so, we're out of the arcade. And we are at... Uh, I just want to show this place for just a second. It's pretty nuts. Um, it's pretty nuts or is, pretty bad? It's pretty nuts. Um, this, uh, yes. Both. <laughs> this is a food court um, at this mall. Uh, like I said, it's Cincy Mills down in uh, Cincinnati. It a is a dead mall. Abandoned. The a only thing in here is... Uh, the arcade? The arcade and a, a baby's... A travel center. Well, that's closed. Is it? Yeah. It looks pretty and uh, a, uh, new to me. And a Baby's R Us, which, uh, yeah, if you haven't been watching the news, will also yeah, be it's all soon. it's on the news. They still have Bass Pro Shop. Though. Yeah, yeah, they're moving soon. Oh, are they? Yeah. But, but it's just, just this big, echoey, so this, empty... So all this food court is building. completely empty. And I do, I do want None to... those restaurants are open. I do want to film I'm the... Just eat all the food. I do want to film this... <laughs> uh, what is it? Oyushi, Japan? Uh, yeah, this place right here. Do you remember this, Travis? We came here and yeah. they uh, they would not give me a they, napkin. They wouldn't give him. I a had napkin. a cold. They wouldn't give him a napkin. I was at a runny nose and I just <laughs> needed to blow my nose. And I said, "Can I please?" Like, we were at the arcade. I was like, "Can I please just have a napkin?" He said, "No food, no, no napkin." No, he, he said twenty-five cents. Did he say twenty-five? Yeah, you cents? didn't get food. Well, then I said, "Can I just get a napkin?" And he said, "No, no food, f- no." Yeah. yeah. So I was I was laughing out loud at this guy. I was like, I thought he was joking because he was like twenty-five cents. He was serious. 25 cents. And I looked over and there was leftover napkins like right here. And it's like, oh, here's some. I just picked some up off the table. Yeah, here's some free napkins. So as you can see, very dead mall. Very, if you have a chance, come down here because like all, like, this one light's working. They don't. You should should get some good B-roll of all the broken down. Yeah, I should. Because it's pretty uh, fricked up around here. So. uh, I I think the thing that caused this is just, it's, it's, uh. You know, it's kind of deadlocked. It's right in between Tri County and then Cold Rain. It's not in a good spot. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's just it's, it's over, always had troubles here. Yeah, like over, they overly saturated with malls. Stuff. You know, I'll tell you yeah. what, yeah. I'm sitting here and I definitely feel the 2000s vibe. Yeah, yeah they, like, just, they never updated. Well, it I just feel like whatever. I can tell this is the, the where I'm sitting. This is the transition from like the 90s to like 2000, 2002. Very much yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can definitely. So if you want to come it. into it, I really encourage you to come to the arcade first, <laughs> <laughs> not just to see a dead mall. But the Dead Mall is like, this is where my childhood was. There was a Ferris wheel. This sounds like I'm just making up fantasies, but there was a giant Ferris wheel right here. There was uh, a roller coaster in one of these There was places. a roller coaster yeah. by yeah. the one restaurant. Yeah, they had like a, a full arcade. Yeah. And it, had, it was basically like David Buster or Toys R Us or something along those lines. They were pushing it to be like a city-esque yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah they, this, had, uh, they had like a roller coaster and tons of... Really cool all kinds of things you could put like coins in, and like a ball would drop and go around this thing. And she, like when you're a kid, that's like the coolest thing. Yeah. yeah. There's still like spots over there where they used to have like a merry-go-round and like a whole little. They still, I'm pretty sure, isn't the playground still in here? I think There's so. Like yeah. A, there is. Yes, a playground. the playground is up here. Is there, we should go check out the playground. We should check out the playground. Yeah. Let's go. Look uh, this place kind of. Have you ever guys heard of liminal spaces? Have you heard that term? Liminal spaces freaky. are like this That's is the, this is a prime liminal space. <laughs> what it is is a place that like your mind like I'll I'll actually mention some to you and you'll know kind of what I mean maybe. Getting up in the middle of the night, uh, truck stops on long trips, 
it's places where like your mind doesn't know how to like function with it. It's always a weird place to be because you're not supposed to be there. You're only supposed to be there for just a little bit. Yeah. That's what liminal spaces are. That this kind of feels like that. Like I don't think I'm supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Like there, all these yeah. shops are gone. Like well, it, it looks just, like it's ran down. It's closed. I get this eerie feeling. Nostalgia if you're not in the arcade, and, it feels like you've broken in somewhere. You shouldn't yeah. be. You shouldn't be here. Like whatever. It's so. Is. Like I was. We were actually walking in here earlier, April and I, and I was just like, I don't see how a place like this is allowed to exist. Mm. I would have demoed this place. It, I mean, it's, this must be a massive insurance liability. Like, yeah. all this empty space. and vacation. I, I, yeah. I think there was Order people even living here. Yeah, I, well, me and my buddy Sam were walking through, and you know, like, when the uh, like a store closes at the mall and, like, those gates go down? Yeah. This entire mall is that, oh, except yeah. for this arcade and the baby. Well, the baby's are well, actually. It's closed. Like you, right you'll, there, yeah. we'll, we'll have some footage. You'll see. And uh, me and my buddy were walking through, and we were looking through some of those gratings to look at like what was in there, and you can't tell. But we saw like makeshift beds set up, like tissue, like yeah. like paper towels and tissue, <laughs> yeah. like in patches, yeah, like someone was weird. like doing the doing their business and stuff like oh my God. like you bring that up? this place is freaking rank is what it's, i'm trying to it's, say it's, it's a little eerie the only, uh, the only bright spot is the that arcade. arcade is freaking awesome the arcade is awesome <laughs> it has games at affordable prices because like you know they're not trying to rip you off a GameStop because they have like the arcade you can come there it's yeah. five bucks for an hour or ten bucks for unlimited for the yeah. day and, it's Plus gonna, you and, and, and what the cool what's really cool about it is like the arcade stuff is what? I was, just, I, was just, I was making a joke with Kenny. Oh, okay. He wanted the Amiibo figure. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. They, if, if you've ever gone to an arcade before, you have to keep putting quarters in, you keep having to yeah. pay. That happened to me with House of Dead 4 most recently, of like getting into that. It's like, I don't have another $30 to throw into this because you keep dying. <laughs> this, you, you can were cheat. playing House of Dead? House of the Dead. Where? Uh, in Tennessee. It was in Tennessee. And you were playing it? Yeah. With quarters? You were trying to beat it? Yeah. <laughs> and I and we got to a kid. <laughs> we got to the end, and it was like you can't you can't continue till you ca- keep putting quarters in. Stuff wow. That's how they made money. Yeah, the game is super cheesy. Like all of them. I They're, played this. So all arcade games are kind of made to a point of like trying to get quarters out of you. So this is awesome because you can keep pressing like the button to like yeah. get unlimited lives. It doesn't make you pay Eight quarters. Pay you pay five to ten dollars. <laughs> Microtransactions. Unlimited play. Arcade Legacy. <laughs> It'll be right here. Check them <laughs> out. Same problem. We always have. And they also have a barcade in downtown Cincinnati. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, any any other game stuff this week? Uh, not week, month. Any, month. any, any crazy um, game stuff? No, not really, man. I think I've I've at least covered the stuff I've heard about and I've cared about. The direct was cool. Uh, I don't. Really I guess there's the rumor out there about uh, Bethesda is going to be dropping some big news yes. at E3. Elder Scrolls Six. The big news is their sci-fi RPG that they've been working on for a long time. So it'll be like Elder Scrolls in space. Hmm. That's the rumor. And then the other rumor is that Elder Scrolls Six has entered production, like pre-production, but it's well, early. I, it's I guess ways this off. is some news. Yeah. No Man's Sky is coming to the Xbox. Yeah, yeah and I it's getting a big that. update yeah. called Next. Yeah, uh, not really. I don't really care, but it's going to the Xbox. Yeah. I've that downloaded every one of those updates and played it for another 10 hours and said, huh, this is cool. So you're going to update the next update? I will. None of the updates, people act like these updates are like earth shattering and maybe I'm just not seeing it. But like I, everyone I've updated have been like, this is pretty much the same game mm-hmm. as it was yeah. at launch, just like a little bit better. So, I'll, I mean, I like it, though. I got it for free. It was a birthday present, have, have so I've never really... Have you the, uh, yeah, the Microsoft situation? Mm. About Which one? The, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The uh, being banned for, like, offensive language now. Oh, what was that? I didn't uh, see that. Tell us about that. Yeah, what went so, on? So, from what I've read, and from what I understand of what I've read, Microsoft can now ban you from, I guess, one or maybe all of their services, including Xbox Live, Skype, and even Office. So 12-year-olds are done, right? They're done. They're dead. Like, they're oh dead, right? Gosh. They banged my mom for the last time. <laughs> oh and uh, so, like, even Office and Skype. Yeah. Are you gonna write that's the weird thing, yeah. yeah. yeah you so, get no more bad words in your uh, 12th grade research like paper. It. It's I, not just Microsoft. Hey, I, have a buddy, I have a buddy who's into all the, like, bad memes and stuff, yeah. and he's in, like, a Facebook group, and I guess he posted a picture that, like, it was in a private group, and, like, Facebook itself flagged it and said, no, we're not for oh, this. they were part of the group. And, uh, yeah, and uh, believe it or not, Facebook was uh, surveying the group. I, I don't, were, I don't believe that. The don't group. buy that. But, uh, 
that's really messed up because if I'm not mistaken, not only are you locked out of all these applications you've spent hundreds or thousands of dollars Ooh. on, you lose your games yeah, too. Yeah, so you can you can nice. typically lose the license to a game you paid for. I, and I guess that even includes like physical hard copies of the game. Mm. And I don't know, that may be unsubstantiated. I'm not sure. Xbox but. One. You got one chance. <laughs> <laughs> but you better not you, mess it up. If you have funds associated with your account on like Xbox Live or something else, they can just strip you of the Dude. money. You, might you know how like, like when you were a kid and you like cussed, you had to put like a quarter in the I, cuss jar. If you cuss on Xbox Live, <laughs> they put I'm everything in the cuss jar and I, they throw it in a volcano. I'm telling you right now, there would be no Travis on uh, gaming. I would have lasted 10 seconds with my 15-year-old self if yeah. I would have never gotten to play any games because they would have shut me down on everything. I think it's time everything. we cleaned it up. I'm proud of Microsoft for stepping up and deciding. You know hey, what? You know what? Okay. You can you can fix these problems. You played Star Wars Battlefront and you substitute yeah, a couple Microsoft letters, turn like, your bad word into a goofy word. You know, I just think Xbox fine. is this the better yeah. gaming console too. While we're at it, but, you know, hey, you know, Windows 10 is a great operating oh, system. Lord. Man, what else can we talk about? Yeah. Internet Explorer a should be ago, your default browser. A month ago, I would have. Right. A month ago, I would have agreed with Windows 10 being great, but all the privacy stuff and just the overall jankiness of it. I, it's, de- it's death by a thousand paper cuts. You're one of those cuts. humanists, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure, hippies. Yeah. yeah, that's me. Yeah, you <laughs> use Linux, don't you? That's you me. Hippie. Yeah. But Kenny, any thoughts? Windows sucks. <laughs> the concerning thing is, though, this is, is like... This is the anti-Windows Windows, side. Windows 10 this is... the pro Windows Windows side. 10 is middle of the pack. If you really look at all the different yeah. editions yeah. of Windows and take a very... It is not the peak. Yeah, it's, it's not the peak, but it is also not the I valley. I think it's definitely... It's not it is eight. not... Windows 8 with the, with all the tiles and all the look, forced eight. mobile touch screen Windows stuff. 7. 8 better than 10. You're, in you're, a way, you're, you're, you're a great man. <laughs> I love you. Uh, what? What? Yeah, we have 10 it is work. Terrible. No, I believe you have 10 at work. I do not believe that you like 8 better than He's 10. He's terrible. In Windows 10. 8 at work was before we went to 10. Opinion. 8 was so much better. Yeah, ways. I had to hit the... The UI was terrible. I had to hit the whatever. This is, this, is a, this is a great discussion. I'm, I'm going to say something. This off the record. These guys don't know what they're talking about. Jacob, you're they, recording uh, this. It's on no, the record. Hey, shut up. Fault. Shut up. I'll, I'm going to cut They out. need to go like away. <laughs> yeah. Tell them to go away, people. Windows 10. I'm going to put Mark Zuckerberg's face hey, every Windows year. Windows 10, <laughs> I get ads in my start menu. And Good, I turn them it. off and they turn back yeah. on. I get all kinds of freaking bull crap. I type in suggestions for programs that I use every single day mm-hmm. and the wrong things. It tries to go to internet searches yeah. on, on I'm, Edge, I'm which I, I don't have, even yeah. use. I'm glad I've got some brothers it in arms here. Finally. You guys just don't know Confirmed what Confirmed Windows 10 the, is not good. But the concerning thing is, like, with all this stuff, like, if they can ban you from Skype or Office, that means indirectly they've admitted that they're monitoring everything you do. Well, who doesn't know that? Just I, give up already. But at least they're... At least they're in office. You thought you at were... At least they're honest. Like, <laughs> well, you know, like, I'm just writing a paper. <laughs> I thought I was safe in you're office. Not, you don't have your own server and you're not in the dark web. You're, you're being watched. All right. You know, exactly. Question question of the month. Are you Windows 10 fan? <laughs> Are you a Windows 10 hater? We're hater. the hater. This is the hater side. That is so. Choose what side. Give it. Give it a score of Left Windows right. 3.1 to 10. 3.1 out of 10. There you go. Just gonna give it. Can't, uh, can't I read want, it. I want to talk about one last movie I watched. <laughs> IGN over here. <laughs> one last movie I watched that was pretty nuts. Mm. Uh, it was called Love and Mercy. Have you heard of this? Nope. It's about uh, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. Oh, I thought you and saw it's, the guy it's kind of like a do- it's kind of like a live action like it, I forgot the freaking person. John Huzak, I think Don't played it. John Cusack. John yeah. Cusack. I think that's who played See the guy played Spider-Man? Brian Wilson no. in there. Oh, okay. But uh Hello? No, no, no. no. That, no, so segue. that's the that's the only thing that keeps it from being a massive uh, Guys, watch insurance liability. It's the security. Yeah, because like I missed it. There was a guy. On the there was a Segway right. man. Did you guys see the three teenagers walking down there? Yeah, no. I think they went back there, and that's why it, the security guys are on them. Man, he did not hustle quick enough. Woo. So don't. Actually, I think someone was like speaking like favorably towards Windows 10. Oh, that's a <laughs> Windows 10 alert. <laughs> he got a bag of, of Buffalo Wild Wings. So he's either going back there to feed the kids. I think it's that. Feed the kids. He's feeding something. Um, so, yeah, Love and Mercy is crazy because it's about Brian Wilson making the album. Pet Sounds? Pet Sounds. That album, and yeah, that album's one of the best cool. albums of all time. Oh. It has literal 
pet sounds in it. He brought a goat into the he recording did, studio. He did so many different soundscape things. He opens up a piano and starts taking like uh, metal on the piano chords and freaking with the. That's where you hear all like the. That's where you hear all the classic kind of sounds from Pret Sounds on there. But what happened was it kind of goes through his like mental illness and like he um, stopped touring with the Beach Boys because like he had a panic attack on a plane stuff. It goes through all of that and you just get to see this. He's a genius. Like the process of like him making music was like insanity. And he had like all of these like very um, talented artists come in to like play like all these all these different instruments and they sit down like at one part of the movie school. He's like, I've worked with all these people and I've worked with like his like like his idols Brian Wilson he's like you're the best like you're you're just way above everybody else and stuff so check that out if you're interested in Beach Boys or just like the process of making art and making stuff is like interesting so that kind of gives a little sheds a little more light on I don't know if you guys remember this but the Bare Naked Ladies had a song or Brian Wilson did they really oh yeah yeah, it's um uh uh, lying in bed like Brian Wilson did because they talk about that in the movie he he stayed in bed for like a year and just didn't get up that, so that makes a lot more sense. Why not? Because yeah, because he just had he just had, had all these like mental issues and yeah. stuff, and Dan he really got fricked up by up one day and just say, "Hey, bub." He got fricked up in a lot of ways and okay. stuff too by like doctors and Such really seven. bad story, but ends up positive. It, he ends up redeeming back. himself, walking yeah. again. Yeah, it's all he, get, he gets out of bed. Good. Glad he walked. The bare naked ladies. I think you're low key judging Brian Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this. I'm not judging him at hey, all. I think he's high. Again, these are the people for Windows 10. I so. think he, I, no, I think he's a Windows 10 type of guy. Whoa. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah Brian on, Wilson man. would have been using. <laughs> 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 no, he would have been Linux all the way. Brian oh. Wilson wanted the, the ability <laughs> to manipulate he what he was he... doing, so he definitely oh, yeah, wasn't on a uh, Mac. All right. <laughs> Look at that. All right, we're going to cut this out. I'm done with this. He was in the dark web. He was in dumpster diving. Oh, my God. This is the three tiers of PC operating system. Either a okay, guy. just right. before we end here, I do want to put a grenade on the table. <laughs> okay, oh, that's good because there hasn't been. I use Edge. I do. I did too. Edge is the best browser. There they go on Windows 10. Here's the kids. They're running from those. Security. It is so smooth. Look it is silky it. smooth. They're, they're going Metal Gear style on the. Are they? On the All right, guys, I am now app. on the. Uh, I hate Snake. Windows. <laughs> Are they really? Snake. Where are they? They're, hide, they're hiding over there from the security guy. Microsoft Edge. Page. Is Where's the where they hide at? They're right there by the escalator. And they're, oh, okay. and they're like, seriously, like they're oh. like, they're like hold on, we might get some Metal Gear, yeah. real life sketch here Snake. in a second. Here. This is bones. That was our arcade. <laughs> uh, that was our arcade adventure. We hoped you enjoyed. Last words: Check out Argus, Argade. Check out the arcade Who's legacy. You? Check out the barcade if you're in the Cincinnati area. And you're of age. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a and um, don't they have one in Newport now too? And the Newport location. Yeah. I'm sure they open one in Newport, Kentucky. Um, uh, uh, check out Dweebo YT at Dweebo YT for the Twitter. You'll get updates if we're streaming. If we're about to do some hangouts, you're going to get it fresh. You know how like people, when something happens on the news, you go to Twitter and you type in, what's going on? If you want the best things about games, you go to at Dweebo YT. For all the best news. What are you laughing at, uh, Windows 10 boy? Shut up. <laughs> In the podcast. Hey, like types. Put Twitter. this puppy to bed. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, we'll be doing more Hangouts. Thanks for joining us this month. Uh, Jacob, send us off with a song. All right, here we go. This is a tribute to my favorite person in the world. And I will always love my subscribers. Yes, you are my subscribers. My subscribers.